um, it was really clear to me, and in the last few weeks, um, I have you know, been listening and reading a lot and learning a lot about manufacturing and really come to the conclusion, I think like many people in Rhode Island and certainly many people in this country now, that as part of a key strategy of rebuilding our economy, both here in Providence and Rhode Island and in our country, we've got to figure out how we do what all of you are already doing, that's making things. And now, one of the notions put forth by the New England Council, and I had a consulting firm, Deloitte, um, run some numbers and, and do some really in-depth thinking on this notion is, um, and to get to the mayor's point about how do we actually grow jobs, is the notion of um, networks and talent-rich clusters and networks, which um, formation of which in New England would really help to, to grow manufacturing. So there are two thoughts on the table. Um, trade policy and also this development of uh, networks and clusters where New England really is quite prominent in that. So um, using those as um, two specific um, thoughts, what thoughts uh, do you have in terms of uh, growing domestic manufacturing uh, here that we can provide to the mayor? Right. As or a is it, you know, the other of feedback? Right. And or is it simply, you know, cost? You know, it's always, you know, something that I hear a lot obviously is, you know, our cost in terms of, you know, both taxes and, like, you know, energy and, is it, and labor, obviously. So, you know, how much of it is, or are there things that we could be doing as either city, state, or right, at the national level that would facilitate manufacturing growth here or not? Um, so, I, I, you know, to be specific, you're asking, you know, it, it, we are, as hopeful, we, we are about 70% automotive. So heard a few others around here, so they probably lived through what we did last year of eight major customer bankruptcies and everybody uh, turning upside down in the in industry, but I've also talked to some others and I don't think there's any industry that wasn't hit last, last year, so I think businesses are all struggling to be uh, basic stable right now, but um, interesting thought on, you know, and I'm not sure where you want to start and where you want to kick things off, but uh, Despite the fact that Hope has just-in-time operations in various parts of the world, we do not do business in Rhode Island in New England. Um, and, you know, so I've always found it interesting that when that you have manufacturing facilities here that don't supply to customers in the area, when things start happening, whether it's wind farms or, or military contracts or anything, what happens to this group that I've never seen before? ever, do you, pulling together the Rhode Island manufacturing and saying, how can you guys supply this business? What can you do? How can we help you grow? What, you know, what is everybody manufacturing? What more? Because it seems like that the state, the cities, the, the, they all, there's business out there. There's parts, there's needs, there's requirements everywhere, and you've got a ton of people that make stuff, but I don't make anything for New England, and we make a lot of stuff. And is it because... New England companies aren't your customer or they're not aware that you're there or buying from someplace in Arizona? Yeah, that would be the question. Or do they go to China before they look right, what's right next door? Or is there a way, a means of, of looking around? So it was just uh, one thought process because everybody's asking why we're in Rhode Island. We don't, have, we don't have customer bases here. So, you know, when we're always looking to grow, you're asking us about market share, you're talking about what business is out there and how do you network the needs to the suppliers um, would be a one good question that I would I wonder if there's an opportunity at a higher level of, of knowing what to, uh, um, how to expand businesses would be. Uh, but as far as it comes to textiles, uh, the big thing in Rhode Island or in uh, the United States has been government business um, because it must be made in the U.S everything all the way through to the U.S. So it's one of the big sectors that we're also looking to grow and trying to find throughout various offices assistance to do that. And I know the, the EDC and there's a there's number of different offices that attempt to do that, um, of helping with military growth and contracts and things like that. And I don't see Keith here today, but he's had multiple forums to do things like that as well. Um, but uh, that would be the first question. How could we help each other? I mean, I wonder if there's even parts that we all need that we could supply to each other or whatever that may be. It would be interesting to find out what, what need on the New England coast. But maybe I'm, maybe I'm different than many. Maybe there is a lot of supply going on out here. Too many people get hung up on high tech. Often used definition of high technology limits the term to aerospace, computers, 
telecommunications, and biotechnical firms. This is perhaps the most popular use of the term. But another definition describes high technology industry as those that are engaged in the design, development, introduction of new products, and or innovations using manufacturing processes through a systematic application of scientific and technical knowledge. So high tech, as I see Johnny's business here and Ellis's business and a few of the other people that I know around this people, uh, around this table are taking people and using people's knowledge set and increasing the knowledge base of our employees to do more things with less, to innovate more. It's not the employee, it's not the employee's job to check their brain at the door anymore because every manufacturer at this table, and Bill too, over there, it's that we want their brains, we want them engaged, we want them to feel a part of this. And as Rhode Island manufacturers, I think that these basic primary industries around this table have felt, well, high tech, aren't we high tech? And we're extremely high tech in our organization because we put a lot of dollars into re-educating our people, getting them to think and be creative. And that's what really gets a business to grow. It's what gets Takeo to grow. That someone on the line says, John, or to one of his engineers, hey, did you ever think about you know, doing this to the circulating pump? And then all of a sudden the cogs get going and innovation happens and it's, and it's fantastic. So don't look at high tech there as businesses that are outside of what we have around because we're all high tech businesses here that just need the challenge to grow and the support to grow. Okay, we should. And we brought back business from China that had been taken away before we started. So um, I agree 100% that, you know, even a shoelace is high tech now. I mean, there is no such thing as mundane textiles. Um, everything is high tech and everything takes precision. But part of what the mayor was saying, part of why we can compete is that technology. Because my customers, Timberland, I mean, they're all making boots and everything else over in China. But they ship my shoelaces from here to China and bring back the boots. And it's better, cheaper, better quality than it is to make them over there. And um, and they do that. They visit us because of our technology, because of our equipment, because of our engineering, because of the way we can turn around color matching and skill. So there are ways to re-engineer yourself, to make a product that, that takes things to another step. We're a net exporter to, uh, to China also for this same reason. But I made a little picture here because I wanted to address the mayor's question about what could the government do to help. And so, sorry, it's, it's my chicken scratch, but um, it's a picture of a bucket, and in the bucket is a certain number of jobs for the state. And at the bottom of the bucket are job loss, and at the top of the bucket are sources of new jobs. So I sort of see it as a three-part problem. On the bottom of the bucket, you're trying to lose as many, it lose as few as you possibly can by helping to keep the businesses that are here healthy and having a constant conversation with each business saying, here are the services that we have, which of these can we make available through rhymes, through uh, loan uh, support, through, um, uh, I'm sorry, uh, workforce development, through all the different, it is helping us sort through those. For us to go look for those is very, very difficult. But to try to figure out how to keep all the businesses, treasure every single one of them that's here, keep us as healthy, healthy as we possibly can. I note there are no bankers here today, for example, um, one of the speaking of healthy. And then in terms of new stuff coming in, it seems like there are two big sources of new coming in. One is taking share from other states. And that is just an economic development battle. Is that, and that to me is competitive analysis. We have a factory in Georgia. We see what they do down in Georgia for economic development. I'm not as aware of what is being done here, but you know, when we lose, why do we lose? You know, clearly Massachusetts has been able to do a lot. What are they doing differently? What do we need to do? So that seems like a straight economic uh, competitive analysis that, that really perhaps is being done. I'm just not aware of it.